Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. A very good evening and welcome to this Sunday's edition of News First Weekend coming to you live from our News First Studios in Colombo. I'm Arundhati Mudan Naika. Let's start off with a look at the stories making headlines this evening. Convene Parliament to debate the bond report, a statement by the Prime Minister. Samurdi loans granted to renovate houses will not be recovered as per a directive of the President. Corruption and election promises, key phrases on the local government stage. Yet another instance where officials ignore circulars that have been issued, an Action TV expose. Ad hoc renovations, the legendary cause for the destruction of Vava systems, a revelation by the gum at the gumming gummeter Vavin Vavat operation. Another story is in detail. The decision to recover the loans granted through the Samudhi banks to beneficiaries to renovate their houses have been withdrawn as per a directive of the President. The Department of Samudhi Development said that 2,500 rupees that was to be recovered from the Samudhi beneficiaries under the Isurumatha Nivahanak loan scheme will not be charged from them with immediate effect. Ishinga Communique Director General of Samudhi Dr. Sunil Jantha notes that managers of all Samudhi banks have been notified of the President's directive. The United National Party held a special meeting at the Campbell Park in Burala today under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe. The public rally was attended by senior members of the United National Party, ministers, MPs, leaders of parties under the United National Front, as well as local government candidates. Steps were also taken to distribute UMP membership cards for 2018. <laughs> We need private sector jobs. That is why we are focusing on investment zones. We are getting a new refinery. We are going to receive three new LNG plants. We are going to receive a steel mill and two tyre plants. This is why we are creating hotels and naval yards. The objective is to create jobs. I want to state that this year we are going to develop a national youth corps, train them and give them jobs. The Prime Minister also commented on the report of the Bond Commission. The Commission report is out and it has been sent to the Attorney General. We will allow the Attorney General to take action and then we will debate it in Parliament as well. Dinesh Gunawardena asked me last week if Parliament can be convened to debate this. I call on the Speaker to convene Parliament. The Commission is of the view that what has been revealed through their investigations or similar actions have been taking place since 2008. That means there was a robbery between 2008 and 2015. What does the Commission say? It says the EPF suffer major blows during this period. Do you know the amount? It is 4,000 billion. This money has been issued with approval. Do not be afraid. Mahindra Rajapaksa would have handed you a debt of 10,000 billion if this continues. Ask him, but you are afraid to ask him these things. Go and ask Mahindra Rajapaksa. What is he going to do about the Bond Commission report? I will have a discussion with the Minister of Finance and make sure all these documents are secure. I will talk with Kabir Hashim and take steps to make sure these documents at the NSB and Sri Lanka Insurance are secure. Who stole this 10,000? I am not making these accusations. It is the Bond Commission that states this. <laughs> What about Ranavir Rajapaksa's amazing MIG deal? Ukraine says they were paid only 7.2 billion. Comrades, there are two MOUs about this deal. This is the reason for the murder of La Santa. They brought MIG aircrafts. The true value was 7.2 billion dollars. However, they paid 14.7 billion. For that purpose, they created a company in Singapore. Go there today, you won't find anything at the listed address. They deposited the money in five accounts set up in Hong Kong. La Santa revealed all this. So they started talking about the bond. What happened? Ranil Vikramasinghe has gotten an assurance through the bond report. He is still Mr. Clean. We should do something against these reports. I suggest to the government that we should put out a constant stream of everything we are doing and action being taken against the corrupt. We need to save the government in order to maintain Yahapalne. 
I suggest that we should fight to provide fertilizer to our farmers at a cost of 200 rupees instead of 350 rupees. Make a promise to our constituents. We will help you set up a separate unit in each local government body to develop housing in your area. After the 10th of February, when the UNP clinches a resounding victory, we can assure you, we will move this housing development drive to the local government level as well. They say the Yahapalna government has freed members of the LTTE. 12,260 LTTE leaders and members surrendered in Nandikadal on the 18th of May 2009. People like Ram and Nagulan surrendered. What did the commander in chief Mahinda do? What did Gotabe do? They freed everyone without legal action. I asked Mahinda one day, why are you doing something like this? He said, they will get vote for me and help me win the presidency. Today they speak of the Awa group and other gangs. We need to tell the Rajpaksas that we have not freed any terrorists who has charges against him. Well, time now for some views expressed on the political stage. They said his slippers are 150,000. They put price tags on all his clothing items, even the underwear. We were afraid to put the clothes on the line after being washed because someone might steal it. I asked Namal what he did. In the end, I saw him panting while pedaling his bicycle. If there is anyone who continues to chant the Mahindra Rajapaksa spells, they will suffer a different ailment. Give that sword to our team led by Mahindra Rajapaksa. We will swing that sword to Severani Vikram Singh in half. Back then, the robbers were Mahindra Rajapaksa's team and Ranil's team were the cops. Now it's the other way around. All of them are the same. The JVP is the government's spare wheel. Anra Kumara's wheel is the one the government uses when they have a puncture. The doctor will not panic just because the crazy people are panicking. There is nothing to panic. You can see some crazy people running around even now. Let them run around. There will be more people coming our way, but there are some who are afraid because of their ministerial positions. The members of the flower bud openly berate Ranil and Mahinda, but they have talks with us on how they can join the government. Ranil Vikramasinghe is a very devious individual. It was Maitri Pala Sirisena who brought Ranil into power. He will launch an attack against Maitri Pala very soon. We fulfill the needs of the people. When the government came in, people said we should stop fraud and corruption and take action against those involved in it. The loss due to the bond scam is 10 billion. However, the loss due to the hedging deal is 187 billion. There is also a scam involving Greek bonds. So bring back this money. If you know the account, bring it. I even said I would give a letter. They said they would provide employment for 45,000 people through the Volkswagen company. They said they would create a new country in 60 months. They said they would create 1 million jobs. They are now falling behind. These guys went abroad. He tried to sneak out of his room in the night, fell down and broke his legs. How much did his treatment cost? 11 million. People say he broke his legs when he was trying to act in an unsavory manner. This was brought up in parliament and he defended himself by calling himself a real man. That means he accepted these allegations. Today on our investigative journalism segment Action TV, we take a look at a meeting that was held at the Temple Trees in Colombo on the 4th of January this year. We are joined by Chaturanga Haparachi from the News First Newsroom with the details. Chaturanga? Thank you, Arundhati. Uh, at the outset, let me tell you that uh, the story we are going to discuss today revolves around the Education Ministry, the Minister and the Secretary to the Ministry of Education. Now, we also have to remember that on the 10th of February, we are going to see the local government elections happening in our country. So, when that is happening, there are certain election laws that are prevailing and obviously there are certain uh, rules and regulations that are put in place already when gathering people to one location. I am going to explain to you of a situation where Third, uh, 3,000 school principals were invited 
to the temple trees in Colombo for an awareness program on the 4th of January this year. Now, these, four, uh, these 3,000 school principals were brought for an awareness program on mobile lab kits that are to be distributed in all the schools or in these 3,000 schools if you are going to take a look at this. Now, on the day of this uh, awareness program, we saw the Minister of Education, Akila Viraj Karyavasam, and the Prime Minister both addressing these 3,000 principals, the officials, state sector officials who were present at that location. Obviously, they spoke about their political agenda and they spoke about the future uh, plans of the United National Party-led government. Now, is this correct when there is an election that is coming up on the 10th of February uh, in this, uh, uh, this year? Now, the question here is that this is in violation of two separate uh, laws in our country. One is, when a principal, a state sector official is invited to an event like this, that person has to uh, record himself as obtaining leave from the school for an official purpose. So he or she has to have a document with him with an invitation to say, I am going to this uh, event on this particular day on an official matter, so therefore I need off or I need a holiday on that particular day. But the funny part here is that this document to say that they are invited or the invitation for this meeting on the 4th of January was given to them on the day of the event, that is on the 4th. And you might ask me how they were uh, invited. They were invited over the phone. They were given a phone call. Now, this letter is signed by the Director of Education and within bracket it says science. So, while this meeting was going on, though this letter is dated 2nd of January 2018, this went to the hands of the principals who attended this particular event on the 4th when they actually attended. They also gave another letter to them. This was the attendance certificate to say that these 3,000 principals attended this special program uh, to say that they can actually apply leave after they go back to their schools. Now, this is a problem because they, the suspicion here is that they might have done this because then the Elections Commission might, might find out of what is going on and they might intervene. So they wanted to avoid that. They, they made sure that this document goes to the hand of the principal on the day of the event. Now, we are going to talk to you about a lab kit. The awareness program was for a lab kit that is going to be provided. This lab kit costs around 120,000 rupees. There are 3,000 school principals, so if we imagine that this is going to be given to 3,000 students, or 3,000 schools rather, the value stands at a staggering 360 million rupees. Now, Chaturanga, can you tell us, uh, can this mobile lab kit provide practical education to students from grade 6 to 11? Yes, that is an interesting question, Arundhati, because uh, we saw during the former regime, even though allegations were raised that... Uh, the allocation made for education through the budget was very less. We saw complete laboratories being put in. We saw the Mahindo Day program happening. Now, this government has actually promised that they would increase the allocations for the education through the budget. We also have information to say that 55% of the allocation through the budget goes back without being taken use of or being utilized. Now, the problem here is 3, 000, uh, 360 million rupees spent. As you correctly asked me, is this a practical solution to the problem? Can this provide uh, practical education to the students from grade 6 to 11? How many students are going to be using this? And this, uh, the kit that you are seeing in the visuals, is it going to be durable? To, is it long-lasting? Are very good questions. Now, Anundati, finally, when we are talking about a project, when you are talking about a tender for 360 million rupees, the most important questions, question is, have they followed proper tender procedure? All these questions are unanswered. And once again, is it right for the government to gather state sector officials going against the circulars that are issued, going against the election law of our country and bring them all into one place? These are all questions that the government has to look into. Arundhati, back to you. Well, thank you very much, Aturanga, for bringing us the details. With the government accepting the resi resignations of the board of directors of Sri Lankan Airlines, a new interim team is preparing to take over the management of the national carrier. The Sunday Times, quoting a well-informed source, says that former chairman of the board of investment, Tilan Vijay Singh, will be appointed to head the new interim team. The article notes that this process will happen probably within days after the current directors are formally sent letters accepting their resignations. Six out of the seven directors at Sri Lankan said that they would resign. 
The exception was Harindra K. Bala Patabandi. The Sunday Time reports that while there is no immediate information about Mr. Bala Patabandi's status, it remains to be seen whether he would be included in the new interim panel or asked to step down with the other directors. The paper quoting the same source said the airline CEO, Suren Ratwata, was expected to continue during this interim period. Now here too we have a Sri Lankan Airlines story developing day by day. Yes, we know that Sri Lankan Airlines has been going from bad to worse day by day. And we also see that uh, due to the pressure that was exerted on the Sri Lankan Airlines and the government, the media and the trade unions all exerted a lot of pressure on the government to take action to arrest the situation that is befallen the Sri Lankan, the national carrier of our country. Without it, it has now extended to the level where it has become a national problem. Now, when this has happened, we also see that as the first such measure, the government has decided to appoint an interim team to go in and, you know, take control of the situation at Sri Lankan Airlines. Now, with this happening, while this is happening, we also receive information to say that the current CEO of Sri Lankan Airlines, Captain Suren Ratwata, is going to continue as CEO after this interim committee takes over, this interim team takes over. Now, the point here is very simple. The accusation towards the management of Sri Lankan uh, airlines or the upper management of Sri Lankan airlines was that they could not manage what was going on. The basic accusation was mismanagement. And the main accused in this whole incident was the CEO, the chief executive officer of Sri Lankan airlines, Mr. Suren Ratwat. We saw fingers being pointed at him to say this was as a result of the mismanagement that starts from the top that has resulted Sri Lankan in incurring this many losses. Now, with that happening, even though you are appointing a new interim team to Sri Lankan Airlines to look into and arrest the situation there, will there be a point when the former CEO or the current CEO is going to continue even when the team is appointed? Now, as you go along, we see that the se uh, six out of the seven board of directors are resigning from the position and we also now see reports that to say that they will be, the process will be expedited and they will be taking over uh, soon, the team. But when these new directors go off, does that mean that they are exempted from all the responsibilities that were vested upon them during the time that is in question? Now, we also know that the president has said that a presidential committee, a presidential commission will be appointed to look into the matters with regard to Sri Lankan and Mihin Lanka. If the presidential commission finds these directors who are leaving right now to have done any wrongdoing with regard to the mismanagement and with regard to the decision making, what will happen then? Will they be exempted from all responsibility? Will they be even in the country to uh, get answers from them and during a time where legal action is taken, needs to be taken? These are all questions that we have to keep in mind. Arundhati? Yes, thank you, Chaturanga. Moving on to other local stories, farmers charge that they will not receive a fair price for their produce due to the importation of rice. Our correspondents report that harvesting of paddy fields that were cultivated with rainwater has commenced in many areas. Because there are stocks of rice in the country, mill owners say they cannot purchase our paddy because our stocks are new. Therefore, we are unable to sell our stocks. They say the government stipulated price is 48 or 38. But when we go to the traders, the situation is different. They offer around 30 or 32 rupees. We are now in a helpless state. A kilogram of kiri samba is around 130 in the shop, but we are being offered only 30 or 32. Two weeks ago, we sold our paddy for about 55 rupees. Now the prices have gone down, and they purchase paddy at 30 rupees. People are helpless, as many are harvesting the paddy. Agrarian societies point out that farmers are unable to sell their paddy stocks for a fair price. Though there is a stipulated price for paddy, representatives of agrarian societies point out that with increase of stocks, that price may go down further. Now the farmers are compelled to sell their paddy at a very low price. Three weeks back, a kilogram of paddy was sold for over 55 rupees. Last week, it was in the 40s range. This week, paddy is purchased for 30 rupees in Akkare Patu, while in Kurunagala, it is around 30 and 35. We inquired from Chairman of the Paddy Marketing Board, M.B. Desanayaka, in this regard. On the part of the Paddy Marketing Board, all our storage facilities are empty. If the government decides to purchase paddy, the paddy marketing board is ready for it.
We have the facilities to store 300,000 metric tons of paddy. We have informed district secretaries and officials to inform us if there is a request from the farmers. So far, we have not received a request from the farmers. From this, we understand that the farmers are still able to sell their produce in the market. If for some reason the paddy prices in the outside markets go down, then we will interfere without any hesitation for the farmer. Bring you some time, my dear. Sri Lanka, which was once identified as the granary of the East, is today waiting with bated breath for the arrival of ships containing rice and a fertilizer. Does this mean that in the future we would have to wait for drinking water from a foreign country as well? Triggering this chain of thought, we launched GUM at the GUM in Government of Vavan Vavata National Program. News First, which is sensitive to the issues of the people, has been travelling around the country over the past few years along with the general public in order to resolve burning issues facing rural communities through the Gamma the initiative. During our journey from village to village, we identified that water is one of the main problems that is affecting a majority of the country's population. Considering that we engaged in practices that did not allow wastage of a single drop of water what are the circumstances that led to this situation? During our journeys, we identified that the destruction of the Ellanga or Vava systems as the main cause for this issue. These villagers believe that creating large-scale water projects would be useless without renovating the Ellanga system. Listening to the views of these villagers who are facing the problem firsthand, together with the irrigation knowledge of the University of Peradeniya, we launched the GUM at the Gumming Gavata Waving Vavata program on the 17th of December with the aim of conserving the magnificent irrigation system for future generations. Launched in the second phase yesterday, our team directed its attention to the first water source of the Malvatoya, the Kumukwiti water spring, which is also known to nourish Vava systems, including the Bellankadavala Vava. Our team commenced today's journey from the Murugaha Vava, another part of the Bellankadavala Ellanga system. We were also able to locate this rock, which is used as the water level indicator of the Vava. The news first gum at the gum in gum at the Vavin Vavata team are here at Moragas Vava today. Uh, now we caught the sight of something that is very special here in Moragas Vava. Uh, what you see down here is a natural spill. Uh, now, our ancestors were crafty enough to use the nature around them to create uh, these spills. There is, a, there is an artificially built spill gate uh, a little bit uh, towards that direction. But this, this is known as Vangala. Now, this is a naturally uh, built stone that uh, water, when, when, the, when, the, when the water in the Vava uh, fills up, the water overflows into uh, the, the vast uh, fields from this natural spill gate. Now our ancestors were crafty enough to use the environmental uh, conditions around them uh, to fulfill their needs and that is the key uh, as we studied yesterday uh, to the success of the irrigation system here in the country. Uh, now the water that comes from Vira Vava uh, flows into Moragas Vava and it goes to Kuda Vava and a number of other Vava and this this Vava system that's in this area is what creates the cascade system. And that is what the Gum and the Gum in Gum and the Vavin Vavada team are inquiring into. We are doing this, of course, uh, with the University of Peradeniya uh, and uh, leading experts in the field. Uh, we will bring you more updates. Stay tuned for the News First team. I'm Charlotte Benedict reporting from Moragas Vava. We observe the manner in which illegal constructions have obstructed the flow of water of the Vava. The Vira Vava Anikat can be identified as one such location. A large number of people gathered in Colombo today to pay their last respects to former diplomat and renowned businessman Devanayagam Iswaran, who passed away yesterday. A number of dignitaries, including Prime Minister Rani Vikram Singha, Speaker Karujai Surya, and State Minister of Defence Ruan Vijay Vardhana, paid their last respects today. Born on the 12th of August 1942 in India, Devanaya Gameshwaran was a student of St. Benedict's College, Kotehena, before earning his Bachelor of Commerce at Pacheyapa College in Chennai. 
He held the position of Honorary Consul at the Honorary Consulate of Mauritius in Colombo from 1995 to 2012. He was a chairman of the Sri Vardaraja Vinayagar Temple in Kotahena, chairman of the Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Central Trust of Sri Lanka and the president of the Sri Sridhi Sai Baba Trust. Devanai Gameshwaran was a president of the National Chamber of Commerce of Sri Lanka and was the vice president of both the Sri Lanka India Community Council and people of Indian origin. Devanai Gameshwaran was awarded the civil honor of Deshbandhu by the government of Sri Lanka in 2017 for his services to the nation. The final rites will be observed at the Burala Cemetery at 5.30 p.m. tomorrow. And in sports news this evening, the extraordinary general meeting of Sri Lanka cricket was held today. Now, during the meeting, Mohandi Silva was appointed as the vice president in charge of domestic cricket, while Roshan Bianwala was elected as the secretary of Sri Lanka cricket. Amendments were also made to the constitution of Sri Lanka cricket during the meeting. Uh, with regard to the constitutional amendments, uh, Minister of Sports uh, made new regulations last year. Uh, we have complied uh, most of the areas of concern to uh, Sri Lanka cricket. Uh, we, we, we have appointed a committee for schools cricket. Schools cricket association can nominate uh, a person to be the chair. Uh, he will be also going to be a member of the executive committee of Sri Lanka cricket. The term of office. Sri Lanka cricket is of the view uh, two years would do. We have to be answerable and accountable for our uh, work. In that context, uh, we have uh, not uh, extended our period. We would like to uh, keep it like that. With that, we wrap up tonight's edition of Weekend Prime Time News. Thank you very much for joining us. Good night.